everybody welcome back um, sorry for the abrupt deletion <laughs> of the last video on how to do this um, one of the commenters pointed out said hey um, I think you might have done something wrong and I apologize guys I, I'm running on about four hours of sleep and I tried to do a video and totally um, hosed it up <laughs> so basically we're gonna try this again hopefully I'm gonna do it right this time so as you guys well know this is um, that bound book uh, from RK Enterprises I highly recommend it extremely useful resource it's got tons of information in here about uh, Kiro, your Kiro and Relics license you can, I mean honestly you can pick these up for about 20 bucks it's the proper format and everything that you need whenever you get one of these fire in, firearms in in order to log your entries so what I've done here today is I have taken and essentially um, made some copies of the acquisition and disp disposition pages um, of this book. So um, I'm just going to go through it quickly. I'm going to show you how to fill this out. What we're going to use as an example is this Walther P38. Yes, this is unloaded. We will, however, check it for safety anyway. It is indeed unloaded. Um, so we're going to use this as our example. Um, this is one that I had actually gotten um, from Centerfire Systems. Um, so what you guys don't see on screen here, I'm actually referencing my bound book off screen. And I'm just kind of transposing this. Oftentimes when you get one of these, well actually all the time, when you get one of these curios and relics in, um, what you will get is a copy of that dealer's FFL and that is what you will need to log in here like I said guys um, I was running really low on sleep so my apologies if I misinformed you guys um, as soon as I realized that error I yanked that video down and I'm I'm fixing this now because the last thing I want you guys to do is do something wrong um, I will start this off by stating I am by no names a legal expert and I am not offering legal advice so please um, consult with uh, proper channels um, in any legal matters so I say all that to say this is just an example of how I would fill this out um, I am going to start with who we received this from just because I need to reference this off camera um, so this particular um, I'm sorry I need to start by kind of showing this to you guys I'll try to put screenshots. You've got manufacturer or importer over here under this description of firearms column. And I apologize for the photocopy. My printer's running out of ink. Um, so you have manufacturer and or importer, model, serial number, type, caliber or gauge, date. And this is all under receipt right over here. Name and address or name and license number. So I'm going to start with this like I said because I'm referencing this off camera here um, this particular Walther came from Centerfire Systems so we're going to jot that down then we're going to put their license number which is and I encourage you to write small or you're going to run out of space like I'm about to do in this example um, This is why you write small. You see, I've, I've done a terrible job of putting it in that block. So, in this case, we know that the manufacturer here is Walther. And you guys can be as detailed as you want to be. I mean, if you want to put, you know, Carl Walther Waffenberg ULM slash DO, be my guest, but that's an awful lot to try to fit in this box. Um, I just put Walther. Um, if you notice on my last video, these are the ones that were um, import marked down here. This one was imported by Century Arms International. I always abbreviate that CAI just for simplicity's sake. Like I said, space is at a premium on this form. So, what model is this? Well, obviously, we know this is a Walther P38. You'll put P38 in that model column. Serial number 
and seven, three. I'm just I'm not going to fill it in completely. I'm just going to put you know xx. You know whatever your guys you guys ends up being, what type it is. Um, you know you almost always will deal with a rifle, pistol, or shotgun. In this case, it's a pistol caliber or gauge. It's a nine mil. Oops. It's a nine millimeter. Now let's just say, just for the sake of this example, we got this in October of 2023. This is not the date at which I received mine. This is just the hypothetical. Now, now that we've got all that filled out, I'm going to move this weapon aside. Okay, now this is where it gets a little, sometimes people get a little confused. So directly opposing the sheet of your acquisition you have your disposition record um, now as a CNR FFL you're a collector you're not to be in the business of you know doing a lot of repetitive buying and selling to make profits it's, it's just not that's that's not what your license is for your license is particularly for collecting however as far as I understand uh, according to the ATF you can disposition a rifle pistol shotgun in order to further your collection so let's say for instance in this case we have this aluminum frame post-war Walther P38 and let's say we want to get a steel frame um, we're gonna we're gonna sell it to buy a steel frame um, wartime Walther P38 you guys know as well as I do those are worth a lot more pretty cool um, so let's let's set this up as though we're we would be dispositioning this in order to get that steel frame wartime P38. So let's say we've had this now for a couple months, and then we come across a steel frame. We want to sell this, and we want to get that steel frame. So what we'll do on our disposition record here, which is directly across, there's a reason it's here, so you can easily keep track of it. Let's say we disposition it on 12/8 of 2023. Okay, you guys see that? Now, I'm going to quickly go over some of these columns here. You have name and address or name and license number. Yes, you can sell this to a non-licensee or or you can sell it to, you know, an FFL. Um, now, to keep in mind, if you're doing this to an FFL, you'll put the name of that FFL and the license number, and you're pretty much done at this point. Um, However, if you if you sell it to an individual, bear in mind you can only do that in your own state of residence. Um, in terms of transferring it to an, to a non licensee, um, now the ATF will recommend that you go through an FFL um, just to cover you and them. Um, but if you know this person and you've known them very well, you don't have any reason to believe that you know they're a fugitive from justice or any of those sorts of things. Um, you know, you can sell to an individual, at least as of today, you can still sell to an individual. Um, so anyway, I'm going to set this up as though we're selling to an individual. Bear in mind, remember, if you're selling this to another license holder, you just put the name and the license number, and you're done. Now, let's say we sell this to an individual. So let's say we're going to sell this to John Doe. And let's say John Doe's address is, let's hypothetically say we're in the state of Georgia. Let's say John Doe lives in Atlanta, Georgia. So we're going to say he lives at, hypothetically, 123 Main Street, Atlanta. I can't spell Georgia and whatever the zip code. You see that? Um, I don't know how well you can see it. Probably not well. And then you'll have the date of birth of non-licensee. Let's say he was born on January 1st of 1971. Um, so you just put that in there. And then driver's license number or other identification of not, if non-licensee. So I, I'd want to see a license at a bare minimum. Uh, a lot of times you can look at their you can look at their license and also look at their carry permit or something like that. That'll give you a little bit better feel for you know if if you whether or not you should be selling this individual for one 
Um, so let's just say his license number is 01234567895. Hypothetical. You'll fill that in. Now, I do want to point out there is another column over here that says for transfers to aliens documentation used to establish residency. I'm just going to be honest with you guys. I'm not going to transfer to anyone in this column. This seems like a little bit of a gray area to me, and I feel as though it could increase the chances of you running into issues, doing something you shouldn't do unknowingly, and I'd rather stay on the right side of the law on that one. Um, but I do want to point out some of this fine print up here. Um, and these are things you need to keep in mind when you're doing this. The purchase or other acquisition of a curio or relic shall be recorded no later than the close of the next business day following the date of such purchase or other acquisition. So you guys better stay on top of your records. Um, the sale or other disposition of a curio or relic shall be recorded by the license collector no later than seven days following the date of transaction. And it says refer to restrictions in the general information section of this book and that's basically where it goes back and it talks about um, not to be in the business of buying and selling. So remember those. Those are important. So that's basically how you do it. Um, like I said, if you're dispositioning it to a licensee, you'll just put the date, you'll put the name, and the license number. However, if it's a non-licensee, then you need to put some more information in here, as I just detailed. Now I'm going to put these pictures um, in this video so you can kind of hopefully get a good look at them up front. Um, and maybe this kind of answers those questions. Once again, guys, I am so sorry. Um, I totally had a brain fart earlier when I was filling this out. Like I said, lack of sleep does funny things. <laughs> um, but this is correct. This is how it should be. And, um, thanks to <laughs> some of my commenters for, uh, saying, hey, dude, uh, you sure that's right? <laughs> <laughs> I greatly appreciate it um, keeping me on my toes because um, I certainly don't want to lead anybody astray but like I said don't take my word for it um, this is just just an overview if you guys got any questions you can always reach out to the ATF you can also talk to uh, some of your fellow uh, uh, gun store owners what have you I'm sure they'd be happy to kind of show you how they do their books um, well they might not be but if you know them well, they might, you know, might be willing to help you out just to make sure you stay honest, you stay legal, you know, things of that nature. So, anyway, that's it in a nutshell. Um, I want to thank all of my subscribers. I want to thank you guys for liking, for commenting, for sharing. Um, like I said, um, you know, this is this this is basically it in a nutshell. I mean, you can you can get as detailed as you want with this, um, but this is pretty much the information you need to have. Um, and of course, you know, let's say you get that steel P38, well, you would just come right down here and record the acquisition on the next line and just keep on going. Like I said, you know, the page directly across from it is reserved for all the entries on this page should you ever disposition any of those said entries. So, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Um, thanks for bearing with me. Um, <laughs> with my lack of sleep, I apologize once again. I feel really bad about that. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching, guys. And until next time, you guys have a great day.